If you're asking the question, how can I use Windows 11 more productively? Unfortunately, you're always getting the wrong answer. See, what no one tells you about is that most productivity gains you can get are hidden in plain sight and they have absolutely nothing to do with programs, apps, features, or gimmicks. I say this from experience as someone who's taught productivity skills for years and I constantly see people working on their computers in absolutely painfully slow and ineffective ways. But this is a productivity video, so we don't have time for a long backstory. Let's get right into it. Here are the things you can start doing right now to make your Windows 11 experience so much more productive. Remove all the junk from your start menu. In Windows 11, this is admittedly a lot better than it was in previous versions. But still, I need TikTok and Xbox in my start menu. None of this is a productivity plus, trash it all. Go to settings, personalization, start to choose what to show or hide in the start menu. And what exactly should we show in the start menu? Well, we don't really need anything there because to open apps or settings or anything else, use the keyboard, not the mouse. Hit the Windows key and start typing the name of whatever you want to open, then hit enter. You can launch most things reliably by typing the first two or three letters and hitting enter. This may seem unfamiliar at first, but you'll quickly realize this is the fastest way to open apps by far. Remove all the pinned junk from the taskbar. We don't need chat or widgets or desktops, and we certainly don't need the Microsoft browser. And while we're at it, let's move the taskbar back to the left because we don't need to try this hard to look like Mac OS, do we? To do this, right click on the taskbar to open taskbar settings and go to taskbar behavior to change the alignment. And there's also a practical productive use to this. With the left alignment, the position of taskbar items is more consistent than with the center alignment. On the topic of widgets, don't use them. For most people, the most productive option is to remove the widgets icon from the taskbar and simply never see this feature again. And always remember, don't feel compelled to use a feature just because it exists. On the topic of getting rid of things, if you bought a laptop or off-the-shelf computer, it's probably loaded down with all kinds of junk programs that you don't need. Hit the Windows key and start typing add to go to the add or remove programs section in the settings. Any program you don't recognize and that isn't part of your computer's core function, you can uninstall. When in doubt, search for the program name to see if it's necessary or bloatware. You can also use bulk crap uninstaller or revo uninstaller if there are apps that won't let you uninstall from this settings screen or that leave components all across your computer. Disable Cortana. At this point in time, voice assistants are slow, high friction and low productivity. Let other people train these things for another 10 years and then maybe we can integrate them in a productive workflow. In the meantime, hit the Windows key and start typing Cortana, then click on App Settings. Turn the microphone permission off, set the background permission to Never, and turn Runs at Login off. To further speed up the startup time and free up resources, remove most things from startup. Open Task Manager, click on More Details, and go to the Startup tab. Anything in here you don't recognize, you can probably disable. Get used to using Alt-Tab to quick switch between applications. And get used to doing this blindly. There's no need to visually confirm which app you're switching to, because usually we're just switching back and forth between two or maybe three apps. And that means that Alt-Tab or Alt-Tab-Tab will get you there. Don't use multiple virtual desktops. It's faster to switch between different windows using Alt-Tab than to switch between desktops. Make use of the window snapping feature. You can tile and arrange windows by dragging them to the edges of the screen. You can also get screen tiling options by hovering over the maximize icon. Use two screens, but use them sparingly. One reference screen and one work screen is generally best. Importantly, use, but don't overuse all of these different multitasking features. It's a mistake to feel like you have to justify your screen space and the screen snapping feature by having windows all over the place. Smart multitasking is when you are using your screen space for applications that you are actually using simultaneously, such as having your presentation on one screen and your presentation notes and Zoom call interface on the other. Dumb multitasking is when you have 12 programs open, including five browser windows with 59 tabs in each one, and it's all spread out over multiple desktops. Minimalism is super productive, and all the tips here work better when you don't have to wade through a torrent of Windows apps and tabs every time you need to find something. Don't use your desktop to store files or folders. The desktop is not for storage, and it's going to be covered by Windows anyway. Instead of cluttering up your desktop, create a simple project-based folder structure so that you always know where to save and where to find any given file. Optimize your internet browsing by using Firefox and the uBlock Origin extension. This removes annoying ads from websites, which makes the web much more pleasant to use, 
and it also speeds up your browsing because all the data for these ads isn't being downloaded on each page. If you're using a laptop, get an external mouse or keyboard. Many Windows laptops have lackluster touchpads and you'll be much faster using an external mouse. Plus, this is also important for ergonomic reasons. Your screen needs to be up here and your input device is down here Otherwise, you're screwing up your posture. On the topic of keyboards, learn how to touch type and keep practicing until you're fast. Check out this video to see how and discover why it's such a game changer. Go to usethekeyboard.com and learn all the basic Windows keyboard shortcuts as well as shortcuts for any program you regularly use. Whenever you find yourself right-clicking and using context menus repeatedly, that's a sign that you have more keyboard shortcuts to learn. Seriously, do this. I can't overstate how much of a productivity win it is to learn keyboard shortcuts. Speaking of shortcuts, you can copy paste file paths in the Explorer address bar. For example, if a program asks you where to save a file and you already have the destination folder open, click into the address bar, hit Control C to copy, then click into the address bar of the program and hit Control V to paste, then enter. This is much faster than manually clicking your way to the destination folder. Optimize your mouse for productivity. Hit the Windows key and start typing mouse to go to your mouse settings. There's no right or perfect setting here. You have to experiment. And here's what to look out for. If you have to lift and reposition your mouse frequently, your mouse pointer speed is too low. If you often overshoot your target and you have to correct, your mouse pointer speed is too high. When these settings are well calibrated, you should generally know where your mouse pointer is without having to visually find it and you should be able to move to and click on things pretty much intuitively without a lot of visual seeking. Notifications are distracting and distraction is unproductive. So remove all but the most important notifications. Hit the Windows key and start typing notifications to go to the notifications system settings. Turn off all notifications that can be a distraction and aren't useful for your productivity. You want to see a lot of off here. And you know you've done this right if you rarely ever get notified and it's something important every single time. Windows 11 comes with various focus features which you can find in System and Focus Assist. These are neat and might be worth experimenting with, but what's more important is that you start from a distraction-free and mostly notification-free workspace by default. Always use backups. Anything important you work on should always be backed up because losing access to all of your work because your laptop got stolen or a disk failed is, well, very unproductive. For privacy-focused options, check out pCloud, Sync, or iStrive. Good budget options include pCloud, iStrive, and of course also Google Drive or OneDrive, but there is just absolutely no privacy. Make all of your important work project folders sync and backup automatically, so you don't have to remember to do it manually. This should just always be happening in the background. Use a password manager like 1Password, Bitwarden, or LastPass because there's no other way to efficiently log into all of your different accounts that is also safe. A password manager is not only the safest, but also the fastest way to log into all kinds of different accounts. Follow these tips and you'll be so much more productive using Windows 11. And let me clarify something. I think Windows is a great operating system. I've used it for decades. It just happens that you kind of have to turn off and deactivate a lot of the default stuff to make it really productive. Just to be clear, just because I'm kind of poo-pooing many of these features, I do like Windows and you should keep using it. And I know it might seem strange, I'm telling you to turn all this stuff off and do things differently than what seems normal. No, who's wrong, Shane or Microsoft? Once you start working in the way I've laid out here, most other people working on Windows will look like they're moving in slow motion compared to you. But with that said, let me share one final important tip with you. Don't fall into the efficiency trap. What is the efficiency trap? Basically, it's this. You can be efficient without being effective. Efficiency, a faster workflow, is kind of like having a really powerful, finely tuned engine in your car. This is great to have, but you can still be driving that car in the wrong direction or even wasting all the horsepower just spinning the wheels in one place. Efficiency is important and useful, but it is not the core of productivity. So then what is the core of productivity? It is your ability to do the most important tasks with deep focus. And just like most people suck at efficiency, most people suck at that too. So don't get lost in just optimizing your efficiency. Also keep in mind that what really matters is that you spend effective work time 
doing the things that actually move you towards your most important goals. If you want to explore this further and you're serious about becoming a highly productive, goal-achieving badass and without having to sacrifice your life on the altar of hustle culture, make sure to check out Focus and Action, our productivity program that has changed lives since we launched it in 2020. And by the way, do you know any other awesome kind of hidden in plain sight productivity or efficiency tricks for Windows 11? If so, let me know by leaving a comment below. Also, if there was any one of the tips that you found especially useful or especially surprising, let me know which one.